How do nerve cells transmit signals? Nerve cells, also known as neurons, transmit signals in a complex and sophisticated manner. Let's explore the process in depth. 1. Structure of a neuron Neurons consist of three main parts. A. Cell body, soma, contains the nucleus and other organelles responsible for cellular functions. B. Dendrites. Branch-like structures that receive signals from other neurons and transmit them towards the cell. Body. C. Axon. A long, slender extension that carries the signal away from the cell body towards other neurons or target cells. 2. Resting potential. Neurons maintain a resting potential, a voltage difference across the cell membrane. The inside of the neuron is negatively charged compared to the outside. This is mainly due to the uneven distribution of ions, charged particles, across the membrane, specifically sodium, Na+, potassium, K+, chloride, Cl and negatively charged proteins. 3. Action Potential Generation When a neuron receives a strong enough signal from its dendrites, it can generate an action potential. The action potential is a brief, rapid change in the neuron's membrane potential. It occurs in several steps. A. Threshold. If the incoming signals from dendrites exceed a certain threshold, typically around minus 55 to minus 50 millivolts, MV, the neuron reaches an excitable state. Depolarization. Sodium channels on the cell membrane open, allowing sodium ions to rush into the neuron. This influx of positively charged sodium ions causes a rapid depolarization of the membrane, making the inside of the neuron more positive. C. Peak. The depolarization continues until the membrane potential reaches around plus 40 millivolts. D. Repolarization. Potassium channels open. Allowing potassium ions to exit the neuron. This exit of positively charged potassium ions restores the negative charge inside the neuron. E. Hyperpolarization. The efflux of potassium ions may temporarily overshoot, causing the membrane potential to become more negative than the resting potential. Refractory period. After an action potential, the neuron enters a refractory period, during which it is less likely to generate another action potential. This period ensures the signal moves in one direction and allows the neuron to reset. 4. Propagation of action potential Once an action potential is generated at the initial segment of the axon, it propagates along the axon towards the axon terminals. This propagation occurs through a process called saltatory conduction in myelinated neurons or through continuous conduction in unmyelinated neurons. In myelinated neurons, the action potential jumps from one node of Ranvier, gaps in the myelin sheath, to the next significantly increasing the speed of transmission. In unmyelinated neurons, the action potential moves continuously along the axon, but at a slower rate compared to myelinated neurons. 5. Synaptic transmission At the end of the axon, 
The neuron communicates with the next neuron or target cell at a specialized junction called a synapse. The synapse consists of the presynaptic neuron's axon terminal, the synaptic cleft, a small gap, and the postsynaptic neuron's dendrites or target cell. A. Action potential arrival. When the action potential reaches the axon terminal, it triggers the release of neurotransmitters from synaptic vesicles into the synaptic cleft. Neurotransmitter release. The action potential causes calcium channels to open, allowing calcium ions to enter the axon terminal. This influx of calcium triggers the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the cell membrane, releasing neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. C. Neurotransmitter binding. Released neurotransmitters diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to specific receptors on the postsynaptic neuron or target cell. D. Postsynaptic potential. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video. Also hit the subscribe button. Ring the notification bell. And let's embark on a journey of knowledge together.